Hi, I'm Anarka. Hi, I'm Lucy. Hi, I'm Betsy. And, and we, we are the, are the mothers, mothers of modern gynecology. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Olamide. In today's video, I'm going to tell you the story of Anarka, Lucy, and Betsy. These three out of numerous enslaved women played a role that advanced our understanding of modern gynecology. But before I get started, I want you to take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. When we think of the beginning of modern gynecology, many people refer to someone who is noted as the father of it. His name was J. Marion Sims. J. Marion Sims was born in 1813, and he was a physician in Montgomery, Alabama. And he was special in the sense that he took care of the entire community. He took care of white people and he took care of slaves in the plantation. But in 1845, he started conducting surgery on enslaved women. He wanted to perfect a technique for vesicovaginal fistulas, which is an opening between the vagina and the bladder and the vagina and the rectum. And you see, these fistulas was a dangerous disorder that affected women who recently gave birth. And it made it very difficult for women to work and reproduce. And well, this was a problem because in this during this time, enslaved black women had two roles, and that was to work and reproduce. J. Marion Sims notes in his writings that there were 10 women he operated on, but he significantly notes three women, Arnaka, Betsy, and Lucy. And these women were very young, all around the age of 17 years old. From 1846 to 1849, he did a series of experimental surgeries. And it's very important to note that these surgeries were performed without anesthesia. And this stems from the theory of black women not feeling pain as much as white women. Unfortunately, this bias still exists in the medical community. When we think about the study done at the University of Virginia in 2016, where medical students voted on a survey that they believed black people experienced pain less than white. Anarka, who was the most noted in his writings, underwent 30 surgeries in the span of these three years until J. Sims perfected his technique. After Sims left Alabama and moved to New York, this is when his reputation skyrocketed, becoming president of the AMA, and he earned his name as the father of modern gynecology because once he perfected this technique, he started operating on white women with the use of anesthesia. We benefit a lot from the studies and works that James Sims has done, like the closing of the fistula and also the use of the speculum. But many of his accomplishments were made possible by conducting experimental research on enslaved women. What is the most striking is that even though modern gynecology was built off the pain of black women, we are still disproportionately affected in the field of ob when it comes to pregnancy mortality. There are still statues and portraits of Jay Sims around the country, but in recent years, his statue in Central Park, New York was taken down after much controversy about his role in medicine commenced. Once Jay Sims moved to, to New York, we understand very little about the fate of these three women because our understanding of these women are limited to his writings. I wanted to take this time to say thank you to these women and all the enslaved women who had to endure the pain and suffering in order to create modern gynecology. Thank you, Arnaka. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Betsy. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Who do you want to hear about next? Hey,